Greetings survivors and welcome back to Mikey's Gaming Oasis. Today we're going to be delving into the world of breeding within ARC using the powerful ARC Smart Breeding Tool. Whether you are a PC or console player, this video is your guide to the art of breeding in ARC Survival Ascended with the Smart Breeder Tool. Whether you're a seasoned breeder or a newcomer eager to start breeding your best dino babies, by the end of this tutorial you'll possess the knowledge and skills to use the ARC Smart Breeder to help you breed your best dino babies. The link to this can be found in my in the description of this video. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button for more ARC survival content from Mikey's Gaming Oasis. Please share in the comments which creature you're most excited to breed. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google, search for ARC Smart Breeder Download, click on it. You're typically going to be the first one from GitHub. We're going to scroll all the way down once we get to the site. and. We're going to ignore all this information because we're going to cover it in detail later, but you can always go back and reference this for more information. You're going to click the download button. This is going to give you all the information on it. You're going to click on the zip file, ARC Smart Breeding zip file. That's the most recent file. Now that we have all that, we're going to export our dinos onto our computer for you PC players. We're going to use the Rex here to start with. You're going to go into your options. And then you're going to go into export dino. What that's going to do is once you click it, it's going to show a message up at the top, as you see. Now we're going to do that one more time. We're going to go into the next Rex. We're going to access its inventory, its wheel, options, export dino. And then we're going to do it for all the other ones. We're going to speed through this real quick. All right, now that we have that done, we're going to find that file. We're going to go into Steam, Arc Survival Ascended, Manage Browse Local Files. That's going to bring up a window. We're going to go to Shooter Game, then to Saved Games, and then to Dino Exports. That's going to bring up a window that shows us all the exports we've done. While this is important, what we're really looking for is that at that pathway. We're going to need that in Arc smart breeder if it doesn't automatically recognize it what you see here is the main page that you will see in arc smart breeder first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to settings once we're in settings we're going to confirm that we are in the proper game whether we're in ase asa atlas or single player this can be used for all of them which means with single player settings you can adjust all the different multipliers and all the settings within the, within this world. In other words, you can use it on any server that you have. Okay, you can come once you select which one you want to use. If you select single player setting, you can then adjust it for all your settings for your either single player world or your modded server that you're using, such as your mating speed multiplier, mating intervals hash speed multiplier, uh, maturity speed multiplier, baby cuddle interview, imprint amount, all those key factors that go into breeding can all be seen in here and adjusted. Next, we're going to go to general. This is where you set up the program to your liking. Do you want your stuff to be seen in Celsius or Fahrenheit? Do you, how many max breeding suggestions do you want to do you want to see? Do you want to see 5, 10, 15, 20? Are you a mega tribe? Do you want to see 50? You can put it all there. It also allows you to select what type of do you want to autosave? How many backups of the autosaves do you want the system to retain? How long you want to wait before loading? All this information is here. Feel free to delve into it more. You can also adjust the language, as you see right down here. Once we're comfortable with that, we're going to go into infographics. Infographics is where we're going to see how the visual representations of the system is presented to us. You can customize it using the select you see in the video to allow you to adjust it to your liking.
importing saved games. When you import a saved game, it'll show up here. And then import export. As you saw for the PC players, we exported our dinos. This is where those file paths are found. If you can't, if you don't see it in here, you need to set up your file path. That's why you copy it. You can set up your file path in this section. Timers, overlays, and OCR. I do not touch OCR because I, I really don't understand it very well. I don't know what it does, so I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to go back and make sure it's on ASA. Now, we're going to go to Extractor. With the Extractor, this allows us to determine how our dinos stack up. You can do it with wild dinos, so you got one knocked out. We're going to say it's a Rex for argument's sake. You can put in its level, all of its information, and then hit Extract level distribution and it'll give you a visible representation of how that dino looks pre-tame that's the key pre-tame we all know pre-tame it's going to change so to show what it would look like let's go into importing the dinos that we just brought in so we're going to go to the import exported data you're going to click on that button it's going to bring up this window Within this window, you're gonna click on copy values to extractor for each one of these, but you wanna do them individually, okay? So for example, we're gonna go through this a few times. We're gonna click on the Therry Female 3, and I'm gonna walk you through all this. Click on values. As you see, all the information for that theory came through. It's a bread theory. It's a level 263. It has its health stats, its oxygen stamp, food, weight, damage percentage, speed, and torpidity. Now, I understand ASA doesn't have speed. The system still puts it as 100%. Not only does it give you the numerical representation of your stats, it also gives you the number of levels went into each stat based on the level of that dyno. It also gives you highlights them and gives you those bars on where they go. It'll go from red, yellow, orange, green, or how you want it set up. It'll give you a stat chart for that particular dyno. Okay, a, a visual representation of how those stats stack up for you to see it in a easier to understand way. And it'll also tell you where those stats fall within your library that you've created as you add your dinos in. It brings in the gender, the ARC in-game ID, as well as the ARC ID for the creature. It brings in the tribe that it was part of, as well as who the owner is. As a, and as you can see, it brought in the name. You can put in your server information, your server number or name you can put in, once you have your library created, you can then go back and put in who the mother and who the father is so that you can track its pedigree. It also gives you its color coordination, where its color fields are. Once you're happy with that, you're gonna hit add library and this is your library view. So, now that we only have one in here, we're gonna go back to the extractor and we're gonna import the rest of these and speed through this. For our console players, once we get to this stage, while you cannot export your dinos directly into your computer like the PC players can, what you can do is you can manually input all this information into the system. For the color coordination to get the color fields, what I recommend is cryopotting the dino and pulling that information from there. It'll give you the numbers. Once you click on the little buttons that have the 014 in this example, It'll give you those different color regions and the options for colors within that region. The, num the numbers associated with those colors will show up in the cryopod. Or if you really want to, you can use the tech binoculars to do the same thing. All other parts of this video will be exactly the same from this point for PC and console. Okay, so now that we have our library created, as you can see, we have it selected to all in the left-hand menu. 
What that does is that allows us to see all creatures within our library. But you can also separate it by genus. So if we want to look at just the Baryonyx, the Rex, or the Theries, or whatever other creatures you have in there, you can. When you click on any particular genus in this library, it gives you categories and all the information that you have here. You have the name, owner, tribe, note, all the stat points there. Okay, if you notice, it only gives you the points, the levels that go into it, not the actual information. You can collapse your mutation levels. You can restore mutation levels for ASA. You can restore column widths. You can automatically set it to where it'll make it easier for you to read. As you can see, you have a visual representation of all everything to include the gender. You have the color and the symbol for the gender, as well as the levels put into each stat category. When we select it, it brings up more information. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's get some more creatures in there to give you a better representation of what it shows for different levels. So let's go to the Rexes, for example. I believe we had five of those put in there. So as you can see, we have everything from a one point going into a stat, stat category all the way up to 47 points going into a stat category. And each one has a different color representation based on how good that point distribution is in that particular stat category. As you can see, the 47s and 44s are green. The 35 is kind of yellowish. Everything else is a dull yellow. You can also look at this in stats where you'll indicate which stats you want to see as most important to you. Then, of course, there's the chart here. The chart you can't see much, but you will understand once we select a dino, you can see in here that it gives you that visual representation again that shows you the distribution of the points. It also gives you a picture of the dino itself, complete with the colors in each region that you assigned. Keep in mind the colors are not always exact. It also gives you the actual stats within that each stat category rather than just the numbers. Now we have the library info. That's going to give you the information that's in your library. How many tames are in there? How many creatures are available? Based on what you have selected in the library. Pedigree. Pedigree allows you to track your family tree for your tames. You can look at it in many different ways. Classic, compact, H. H is similar to compact. It just changes it slightly. In compact, it'll actually, it will actually show a family tree like you see here. With that tree, you also get a key that tells you what each symbol will show once you start breeding those dinos. It also gives you the option to use this program for taming. I personally do not use it for taming. I use Dodo Dex, but it is very similar to that. You input all the requisite information from, Do from the tame, just like you would Dodo Dex, you need to put it in there. Then we have the breeding plan. The breeding plan allows you, well, helps you, assists you, guides you to build your best dino. You determine what you want to do. Do you want top stats? Do you want lucky top stats? Do you want best next generation? You can also include the cooldown creatures, the, include those that are in cryopods, if you can't remember exactly which ones you have in cryopods. What you have here is it'll give you a breeding score. The higher the breeding score, the higher the chances of getting the better stats. It'll also give you a probability chart down here for whatever breeding pair you have selected at that time. As you can see, when you highlight, hover over any of the bars, it'll tell you the percentage for each stat in each level. So let's change this up slightly. As you can see, when we picked a different breeding pair, it changed that probability chart as well as your best and worst dinos. Now, you saw how it didn't change the best, but it changed the worst because it's the same female, but a different male breeding onto it. Now let's go to one of our worser pairs. You, as you see, the probabilities got worse and worse, and the best possible breeding pair for that pair are not that great. Okay, it also gives you a breeding times. These breeding times are based off of what you put in the system earlier. Now, stat weighting. Depending on how you want to breed your dinos, you can put information into the stat weighting. It allows you to give emphasis to certain stats 
for your dinos. For example, health, you can put it either as a one or a two, but you can adjust the importance to it in that scale with the up and down arrows next to it. So we put it down to one, see how it changes the, the probability. As we increase this, it changes everything. Whether on how you want it, you can set it up, then you can save it as well based on that genus so that you don't have to remember exactly what you had it set at every time. So you can just select the genus and it'll bring that up. As stated earlier, the system allows you to use it for taming, hatching, and racing. I personally do not use it for taming. I use Dodo decks for that. But what I use for raising is a website called Crumplecorn. I will add the link to that in the description below. Visit it, it is very helpful. Then you have the players. With players, you can put in here any players that you run into. You can also add in their tribe. So you will know if it is a hostile tribe, is it, is it uh, uh, did you get the dinos for PVP? Did you get the dinos from this tribe? Did you get them from this tribe you took? For PVE, A, did I borrow this, this uh, dino from this person to breed for, from? So on and so forth. As I stated earlier, I know nothing about OCR, so I do not touch it personally. I hope this information helped you start your ARC breeding journey. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave that comment below on which dino you are most excited to breed. See you next time.